Go ahead and give it the old Quad Cities cut. Once down the middle. I think I can eat this without burning my face. We'll try. Oh. Oh, that is so good. Oh, the malty. Hello, I'm Paul, and this is Paul Plays With Fire. Welcome. Looks like we need to welcome some new faces out there today, too. Our Cosmo restaurant tour videos were quite popular for us, and I'm sure we've got some new faces watching today. Saint, thank you for being here. As a mini introduction, I'm Paul, and I like to cook food, and I like to eat food. Sometimes we do our cooking outside on an open fire, sometimes we do it inside in the kitchen, and sometimes we let other people do the cooking for us. But we always have great food and we always have great fun. Today we're cooking inside and we're gonna make pizza. Not just any pizza, but Quad Cities pizza. In case you're not familiar, the Quad Cities are an area on the Iowa-Illinois border split up by the Mississippi River. Quad City style pizza has been around since the 1950s and has several distinctive features, the first of which is malt syrup is added to the dough. It gives it a very rich taste and aroma, and the, the aroma is quite, quite distinct. I was in Frank's Pizzeria in the Quad Cities earlier this year, and that aroma just was so overwhelming. It was delicious, but it was a very distinctive smell. The other interesting features are the use of whole milk mozzarella, a spicy sauce, loads of toppings, especially meats and sausages, and the distinctive Quad City style cut. You just don't see that much anywhere else. The dough tastes best if it gets the rest in the fridge overnight. So we're making dough today for our pizza tomorrow. To start with, we're going to take about four ounces of 100 degree water, no warmer than that, or you'll get the yeast, and then add a package of yeast to it, and then just stir that up. Stir that up till it's all mixed in. Let it sit 10 minutes for the yeast to proof and then we'll come back to it. Okay, our yeast has proofed nicely and it's uh, getting nice and frothy, so it indicates it's still alive. So now we're gonna add our flour, and this is four and a half cups of flour, give or take. I'm gonna hold a little back just in case, because you never know how it's gonna look. Base it on the feel, much as anything. And we got two thirds of a cup of water to add to that. Our dry ingredients, which is salt, pepper, oregano, and paprika. Gives a nice look and feel and taste and aroma. We're going to add our malt syrup, and this is kind of a messy process. First of all, I should show you the malt syrup. It's a barley malt syrup that I got somewhere. And the easiest way I found to add it is to just put a, add it right to the dough with the dough sitting on the scale because it's been refrigerated so it's a little sluggish coming out. And we're shooting for 84 grams, which is three ounces. Oh, there we go. Okay, we got a little, little cleanup to do, but that's okay. Happens every time. There, it's 90, 91 grams, that's pretty close for, for what you just saw. Okay, let's stir this up some more. It takes quite a bit of time for that malt syrup to get absorbed into the flour. You'll see streaks of it all the way through the process. Sometimes the best way is just to get in there and get your hands dirty. And we really want to get to what we call in the, in the, in the baking world, the shaggy ball stage. The water has been absorbed into the flour, um, but then it needs to rest a little bit to continue that absorption process. That takes some time. So we're just gonna let that rest for a little bit and see how this goes. Okay, our dough has rested for about oh, half an hour or so and has absorbed all that water and it's gotten out, has a very nice consistency, but now it's when the hard work starts. Just have to knead that dough to get all that flour and water mixed up and everything else. Everything else is in there. So we'll do this for about five minutes and I'll check back with you. Well, it's been about five minutes and both the dough and I need a little, a little rest. We're both getting pretty much a workout, so that's fun. It's getting mixed up real good. And it's 
it's feeling like it's moving in the right direction. It's not there yet, but it's getting close. So we'll let it rest for five minutes. And we'll come back. There you go. We've given our dough another five minutes of kneading and another five minutes of resting and another five minutes of kneading. And now it's kind of where it needs to be. So it looks pretty good. I'm just going to put it in the pan with a plate of flour. Let it rest in there. Let it sit outside the fridge for probably a couple hours and then I'll put it in the fridge for overnight and where it will uh, develop complex flavors we hope. See you tomorrow. Welcome to day two of Quad City Style Pizza. Uh, we did all the hard work yesterday, uh, making the dough that is, and all we have left today is the fun part, making the pizza, cutting up the ingredients, that kind of stuff, cooking the pizza, and of course eating the pizza, that's the really fun part. So we've got our dough here. It's uh, just over 35 ounces. So it's going to be about 17, 18 ounces per pizza. Um, that's going to be on the little on the bigger side. So I think we'll, we may be, we've got a 14 inch pan that we're going to work with. It's my deep dish pizza pan, but we're going to put the dough in each, in each pan and uh, let it rise here first. So we're going to have to go through its, uh, its final rise in, in the pan. And then we're going to stretch it out in that pan uh, the best we can and hopefully get a, a close to a 14 inch pizza with that much pizza dough. So I already measured it. So we'll roughly cut it in half. See how good we do here. Well, that's a stiff dough too. Get her scale out quick. That is 17.7. 17.8. <laughs> Pretty good for eyeballing it. Okay, so we'll basically just form these into shapes and it's still cool. You can still feel the coolness in it even though it's been out for an hour and a half or so. Um, as it warms up, then it'll start it, start that final rise, get nice and fluffy, we hope, and uh, make it a little easier to stretch out into proper pizza dough. Okay, there we go. We'll see you in a couple hours. The next step in preparing our Quad City style pizza is to prepare the ingredients. Um, we're going to start by cutting up an onion and I like to cut up the onion in longer rings and so that pretty thin so that they cook all the way through. But I like to have a little bit of center in there someplace too. So I'll break up those onions a little bit, but not a lot. And it doesn't take a lot of pizza or a lot of onion to to cover a pizza, so we won't get too carried away with these. I worked at a pizza place in college making uh, Chicago style deep dish pizza, and that's really where my, a lot of my interest in making pizza came from originally. Um, I've done that, I made pizza, especially in that style, all my adult life because I was able to get the recipes and and, uh, and make the dough and, and make, make everything. It's, it's really good pizza. We'll do that in an upcoming episode here real soon, probably around Christmas time. We're also gonna cut up a little red pepper and I like to leave them in uh, Julienne style pieces. A little longer, almost like matchsticks. Speaking of upcoming episodes, Christy mentioned to me, asking when I was gonna make sourdough again, she, cause she really likes my sourdough bread. And it's quite a process. It's a very interesting process. Um, and so I'm sure we'll turn on a camera or two and, and film, film the process just for fun. That'll also be coming up sometime soon. That's the vegetables we're gonna have. We're gonna have green peppers, onions, and black olives and uh, um, then the sauce, of course, and the cheese, and we're also gonna put some pepperoni on it. I know traditionally um, Quad City style pizza has sausage on it, but I like pepperoni a little better, and I have a really good quality pepperoni on hand, so that's what we're gonna use today. Okay, now's the time where we stretch the dough to shape. Um, it's uh, increased in size again, and it's looking pretty good. This, is, this to me, is a gradual process. If you can't hurry it, you can't push it, you just have to kind of gradually make it a little bigger, you know, and you can throw it up in the air. I don't really do that much. It's, I don't want to talk about what happened. Um, and, or you can uh, use a rolling pin. That's, that's another method that you can use. Or you can just kind of gradually stretch it out with your hands. And then I'll, I'll kind of go, since I'm doing two pizzas here, I'll do one pizza. And then after I 
get to where we both need a little bit of a rest, then I'll go to the other pizza and just back and forth like that. But just be patient, be very patient. Especially this dough with the malt powder in it, I mean with the malt syrup, it just seems like it really has a lot of, a lot of substance. Okay, I'm gonna move the other pizza. And the same process, we'll just kind of gradually smoosh it down, smoosh it around, and make it bigger, and try not to put any holes in it. I'm resorting to using a little bit of a pastry roller just to get worked out a little bit. I guess I'm just out of practice. Note to self, make more pizza. Again, it's a slow process and just be patient. Just like that. And I haven't oiled these pans yet because I want them to kind of stick a little bit when I'm trying to stretch it out. Otherwise it just slides around in the oil. But before I get them started, I will give them a, a coating of just a little bit of olive oil or something. Cause this dough, un, you know, un, unlike most other doughs I'm used to working with, doesn't have any olive oil. I know New York pizzas don't have any oil either, but it just, uh, it's a different kind of dough. I'm going to put mine in first because it always takes longer. We'll give that about a five minute head start and then we'll put Christie's in. Okay, in order to cut this, we're going to flip it out onto a peel I have and slice it, slice it right there in place. Okay, this one is ready to go. We're going to go ahead and give it the old quad cities cut once down the middle. And now if you're going to really be authentic, you got to do it with a pizza shears, but we don't have pizza shears, shears so, and then four cuts across this way. And from what I hear, the corner pieces are prized pizzas, pieces. I don't know why, because they're, they're all crust, but that's what they like over there. There you have it. A little sloppy. Quad oh, cheese pizza. Now you have to put that back as, in the pan? No, I'm going to leave it right there. As soon as as soon as soon it's not going to burn the roof of my mouth, I'm going to taste the slice. Oh, okay. Okay, look at that. Quad City style pizza. I think I can eat this without burning my face. We'll try. Oh. Oh, that is so good. Oh, the maltiness in the crust that gives it such a rich flavor. Mm, mm, mm. That is delicious. I, I don't care who you are. That's delicious pizza. Chicago, New York, you should learn about Quad City style pizza.